Well, good morning, um, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to this exciting event on improving nutrition through accountability and data systems, smart nutrition for growth data commitments. It's great to see we have over 300 people registered with us today, and I'm sure that many of those will join and maybe more. So that's great news. My name is Sergio Cooper Teixeira, and I will be your moderator for today. I'm a strategy advisor at Nutrition International, supporting the Nutrition Technical Assistance Mechanism. I used to work at the Sun Movement Secretariat, where some may, you know, may know me from, and also I was a REACH facilitator in West Africa for several years. Before that, I was a management consultant at BCG and Bain and & Company. And I'm really glad to have been invited to moderate today's event because I've, you know, data has been central to lots of my own work experience. And I've seen firsthand the impact uh, well-analyzed and well-presented data can have. So I'm really looking forward to today's presentations and today's panel. So today's event was organized by the Nutrition Data Partners Group. That's a group of development partners that has been meeting regularly for the last several years to better coordinate efforts in the nutrition data space. You will have seen their logos just on the previous slide. We'd also like to thank the Data for Nutrition community of practice who are supporting logistics for this webinar. The DFN community provides members with opportunities to share knowledge, experience, and questions relevant to strengthening the nutrition data value chain at all levels for the purpose of achieving better nutrition outcomes in low and middle income countries. So thanks to them for, for supporting the logistics for this event. So before we start, I'd like to go over some logistics for today's event. So first of all, regarding language, please select now the language of interpretation that you would prefer. So translation is available in English, French, and Spanish. So to enable it, translation, select the interpretation button and you can see it signaled there and choose your preferred language. You may want to also select mute original audio. Give you all a second to do that. Next slide, please. Okay, so before we start a couple of additional um, housekeeping tips. So everyone's video and microphones are automatically disabled. So you won't be able to enable those. So if you want to submit questions, please use the Q and A box. And to do that, press on the Q, click on the Q and A button. Um, you can submit questions for the speakers. And then later on you can submit, um, yeah, so you can submit questions for the speakers as the event goes on. Um, and we'll have 10 minutes halfway through the event to pose some of those questions to our speakers. If you have any technical issue though, use the chat, the different chat box called uh, chat and send it to all panelists. Right after the event, a recording will be available uh, on the Data for Nutrition YouTube channel. It'll take a couple of weeks before the presentations and a discussion recap is available and shared with everyone. Next slide, please. So I'd first like to welcome Dr. Kelly Stewart. Kelly will be telling us a little bit about, you know, why it's so important that we're here today to discuss this topic of data value chain for nutrition. Why is it so important and needed that we discuss this today? So Kelly Stewart currently serves as Chief of the Nutrition and Environmental Health Division with the Bureau of Global Health at USAID. Over a public health career that has spanned almost 30 years, Kelly has led efforts on a broad range of development and emergency response programs, including multi-sectoral nutrition, health system reform, maternal and child health, infectious disease, vector control, HIV, family planning, and reproductive health. She started her development career as a Peace Corps volunteer in Guatemala and then Honduras. She has a BA in sociology from the University of California, Santa Cruz, and an MHS from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Welcome, Kelly, and over to you. Thank you very much, Sergio, for the warm welcome. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of our participants today. Um, welcome to this Nutrition for Growth side event, highlighting the importance of consistent and quality data on nutrition indicators. As a representative of USAID, where we greatly value and invest in nutrition data systems, 
I am honored to speak on behalf of the Nutrition Data Partners Group. As many of us know, the 2014 Global Nutrition Report called for a data revolution in nutrition, recognizing that data investments are needed to enable countries to design and implement effective policies and programs, mobilize resources, and monitor progress. While some progress has been made to improve nutrition data, current efforts are still insufficient, and I think we would all agree that our work here is definitely not done. The Nutrition for Growth Summit this year will be the next significant milestone for donors and countries to make global commitments towards achieving the World Health Assembly nutrition targets and sustainable development goals for nutrition. With the global momentum behind the Nutrition for Growth Summit to improve nutrition for communities around the world, this is an absolutely critical moment for us to re-engage and double down on our commitments to improve data systems. Next slide, please. Data-driven accountability is a core focus of this year's N4G vision because improved data measurement and use is essential to make equitable progress on nutrition outcomes. As you can see here, few countries have made strategic investments in nutrition data and monitoring and evaluation activities. In data-dense 2019 review of national nutrition plans, only 33 of 58 countries had costed plans with sections on data and monitoring and evaluation. Of these countries, in several cases, a very small proportion of the budgets were allocated to data and monitoring and evaluation activities. Next slide, please. Well-functioning nutrition data and information systems guide the prioritization, collection, analysis, dissemination, and use of nutrition data in countries. On this slide, you can see that in the past three years, Minimal funding is budgeted for nutrition data related activities, including nutrition information systems, and funding appears to be plateauing despite the growing need. In the same time frame, donor disbursements fell short of a 5% benchmark for funding for nutrition data. Next slide, please. Given the importance of data to improve nutrition programs and outcomes, a call to action has been articulated in the Nutrition Data Partners Group Recommendations Guide. This call to action states that all countries and development partners should make specific commitments to strengthen the collection and use of nutrition data that reflect the following principles. First, allocate at least 5% of total nutrition funding to strengthening data and information systems. Second, attend to all elements of the data value chain, ranging from prioritizing what data to collect to fostering a culture of data use. Third, facilitate linkages between access between linkages between and access to nutrition and food systems data by all actors across sectors, ensuring a multi-sectoral approach, and finally, to ensure a robust internal system to track and for g commitments. Today, we will learn about examples and commitments along the data value chain to support further investment and commitments on stronger nutrition data. I hope today's examples can motivate new and further enhance existing commitments to include improvements to data monitoring systems. Strong data is pivotal to improving nutrition for women and children, particularly in the first 1,000 day period of growth between pregnancy and a child's second birthday. As we look towards nutrition for growth, we must elevate data across all of our commitments and take strides forward toward fulfilling the data revolution in nutrition. Thank you again very much for your participation in this critically important session. Thanks so much, Kelly. And thanks so much for reminding us of why it's so important that we, that all countries and organizations consider integrating or making a nutrition data commitment as part of their, the commitments that they're formulating uh, for n for g And it's pretty obvious that the need's high and many more data commitments are needed. So today's event aims to showcase and recommend potential actions that can be taken along the different elements of the nutrition data value chain and to inspire you to turn those into commitments. We'll therefore see presentations that are organized along the different steps in the data, data value chain. So we'll first hear about data prioritization and data planning with speakers and an inspiring example from India. We'll then hear about data creation and collection, curation and analysis with speakers and examples from both Bangladesh and Malawi. And finally, we'll hear about data translation and dissemination for use in decision-making with speakers and examples from Niger. 
And that's how the agenda for the, the first portion of the event is structured. We'll have presentations along those three themes. And, and then we'll have a 10 minute uh, Q&A session where um, I'll be able to pose a few of your questions to the speakers. And then we'll move on to a panel with a different set of speakers. Um, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, so, now, um, so moving on now to, um, next slide, please. So as I said, our first two speakers will be sharing India's experience with the first steps along the data value chain, data prioritization and data planning. Next slide, please. Let me introduce both of our speakers. So first of all, uh, Purnima, Dr. Purnima Menon is a senior research fellow with the International Food Policy Research Institute in New Delhi. Purnima is the theme leader for South Asian nutrition programs in IFRI's poverty, health and nutrition division and directs the POSHAN initiative partnerships and opportunities to strengthen and harmonize actions for nutrition in India, which supports the use of evidence for nutrition in India. She conducts implementation research on scaling up maternal and child interventions, including on evaluating large scale behavior change communication programs in nutrition and health. Pranima has a PhD in international nutrition from Cornell and an MSc in nutrition from the University of Delhi. Our second speaker will be Dr. Divya Nair. Nair. She's a senior director at ID Insight, also in New Delhi. Divya's focus is on catalyzing evidence-informed decision-making to maximize social impact, having worked with national and state government institutions, multilaterals, and NGOs for over 15 years. At ID Insight, Divya leads teams to identify key challenges and design and execute a range of high-quality, demand-driven analytical services. Dr. Naya is deeply invested in addressing issues around health and nutrition and women and girls empowerment, and has also worked on financial inclusion, sanitation, and agriculture. So over to you, Purnima. Divya will kick us off. Hello, um, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm going to start and then hand over to Purnima, so we're tag teaming a little bit, uh, just to kind of kick us off, um, uh, you know, to kind of set the context. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is the work that we have been doing with the national government to support the monitoring of the national nutrition mission, and specifically our work with Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog is uh, the government's, pub, uh, you know, official think tank and they have been asked to monitor the national nutrition mission which was kicked off in 2018 um, and ID Insight and IFPRI have been working closely with them at various points so we'll be talking about some of the work that they've been doing they've been doing a lot more so this kind of just gives you a flavor of some of the key um, you know pieces that uh, we've been engaging on so I'm going to pass on to Purnima and uh, over to you, Purnima. Thank you. Could I have the next slide, please? So India launched uh, the National Nutrition Mission, also called Poshan Abhyan, in 2018, uh, monitoring of, uh, of the activities of the mission and the, um, the reach and impacts of the mission um, by, uh, was mandated to sit with Niti Aayog, which is the national policy uh, think tank. Um, and so the, the, a lot of the work that is done around the monitoring uh, for the National Nutrition Mission is anchored and led out of the National Policy Think Tank. Um, uh, quite a lot of thought went into uh, thinking through the importance and uh, the relevance of data in the context of the National Nutrition Mission. Uh, and given that, you know, we believe that India is quite well positioned to be a strong example of leading nutrition data use across the data value chain. Um, at the time that the mission was launched, several uses of data were anticipated and, and are in place. Uh, these include data to track progress, uh, report on and assess the impacts of the mission. Uh, they include uh, using data for strategy refinements at different levels and different time points, and using data for program refinements in an ongoing fashion. Again, at the time that this was uh, set up in, in sort of late 2018, uh, review mechanisms for the use of data and strengthening programs uh, also exist, uh, existed and continue to exist at different levels, 
but guidance for uh, how to approach the use of data was limited at the time of the launch. Next slide. One of the key steps in, in launching an effort to, to monitor um, the, the rollout of the national nutrition mission was actually outlining a, a nutrition data indicator framework. Um, uh, both uh, ID Insight and we collaborated uh, with Niti Ayo to, to begin the work to, to, to lay this out. Uh, we organized a framework uh, building on the, the sort of well-established uh, conceptual frameworks for um, for malnutrition, uh, the UNICEF and Lancet and other frameworks, and, and also really the framework that uh, and theory of change that the uh, National Nutrition Mission itself was grounded in. So we organized that framework around interventions for which uh, it was thought to be useful to track coverage, uh, as well as determinants and, and impacts, um, and then use that to put together a framework of potential indicators based both on the program's theory of change and on existing interventions in the core national programs. Uh, these were also the, the platforms. Um, these included the platforms that, that contribute to the delivery of the program. Uh, we then examined the data availability across uh, available data sources in the country, both surveys and administrative data, to look at what was actually available to, uh, to put around this indicator framework. And we've summarized uh, our joint insights into, into an approach paper, uh, which sort of outlines all the, the issues to consider in developing the monitoring strategy and the, and the framework of indicators for India. Um, next step, next slide, sorry. Now the development of the framework itself was, uh, was a long enterprise and it really engaged a lot of people uh, and, and create a lot of thinking about the theory of change and also where the intervention sat uh, that related to the mission. But the other thing that the, the development of the framework did was identify several data gaps uh, while also providing the community an organizing rubric in a sense to work with the data. So for example, we found that there were 55 interventions uh, across all of the sector, multi-sectoral interventions um, in the mission. Um, and only six interventions actually had available data across both survey and administrative data sources. Nine interventions had no data available from any source whatsoever. And we also identified several challenges uh, related to the data, but nevertheless, uh, the use of data continues. Um, so uh, next slide, please. Um, one of the key users of data in the National Nutrition Mission in India has been the, the Poshan Abhyan Progress Reports. Uh, these reports are led by Niti Aayog as a monitoring entity for the National Nutrition Mission. Uh, they are hosted in public domain and the development of the progress reports uh, in and of themselves is an enterprise in engaging people around uh, data. To date, there have been three reports published. Uh, the first one in late, um, uh, in, in 2019 focused on early progress and on systems readiness. Uh, the second one, which was towards the middle of 2019, focused on um, not just on readiness, but also the unfolding of several innovations in the, um, uh, in the um, implementation systems. Uh, and then the last one uh, before the pandemic hit focused on, on coverage and on using coverage data to pr predict uh, forward um, so, you know, this has been a very nationally owned uh, monitoring uh, process, which has really built on, on the framework of indicators and, and other data sources. Uh, I'll hand, over, hand back to Divya now. Back to you, Divya. Great, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm going to quickly give you a few examples of uh, you know, uh, some of the work that Niti Aayog has done, starting with uh, primary surveys that they have conducted uh, with, in this case, we've uh, ID Insight has worked with uh, Niti Aayog and also with the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Uh, one of the key pillars of the National Nutrition Mission is social and behavior change communication. And so, uh, you know, given that a lot of messaging was going out across the country uh, for a few years, uh, across a, a number of platforms. So they were using 21 different platforms, you know, uh, from mass media to mid media to, you know, uh, basically interpersonal communication. Uh, the question was, uh, how are beneficiaries actually receiving it? 
So we conducted three rounds of surveys with across the country that were representative of various uh, you know, populations focused on women and children um, and uh, basically provided information on you know, the reach, recall, knowledge and practice related to key nutrition messages. Similarly, uh, we've been working uh, 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 across some of the poorest districts in, in India, um, and from each department, we were collecting data with Niti Ayo for around 34,000 households um, and providing information on a range of indicators, but particularly, uh, you know, the bulk of it was on health and nutrition. And so Niti Ayo was, you know, getting a sense of the change over time. Um, and across states regularly and monitoring it and providing feedback to district officials in this case. Uh, we've also been working with administrative data uh, where we're trying to strengthen the quality of administrative data with uh, third party checks, but also just in terms of you know, providing use cases of how can administrative data be used more because a lot of data is collected, but uh, it's often not used much. Um, and Related to that, we've been doing capacity building with uh, the government and with IFPRI, uh, where basically we've been uh, working on, again, data use is how do you uh, generate tables or graphs that are very intuitive and useful, and how do you analyze data that, that is available? And finally, uh, we've been working on, uh, you know, as Purma mentioned, setting up these frameworks that uh, and reports that, uh, you know, people at various levels can use. Last slide, please. Um, so just in terms of reflections, we thought there are a few is ownership and leadership is for data use. Uh, it is important to also acknowledge that, you know, you might not have complete data, you might uh, work with different varied qualities of data, but kind of, you know, really pushing on the data use piece is very important. And the sense is that the more you use the data, the quality of the data is also likely to improve. And finally, you know, it's very important. As Purnima mentioned, there are, you know, plugging of gaps as we go forward. But I think uh, in India, there has been a lot of progress since. of just the amount of data that is available, certain but significant progress. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thanks so much, um, Purnima and, and Divya. Uh, thanks so much for your presentations and uh, basically for sharing with us some of the successes and challenges with developing this uh, comprehensive framework of indicators for nutrition in India. Uh, so much there to learn, uh, and it looks like lots achieved. Thanks for that. Uh, so um, in between uh, presentations, uh, we'll be sharing with you also some small uh, updates or bits of information. Uh, and here's one of those. Uh, so UNICEF and the WHO team just launched uh, the fundamental series with five modules. It's an e-course, and it's to support countries in the design of implementation of national nutrition information systems. So it's just a little tidbit that we wanted to let you know about. Uh, before we move on to our next uh, presentation. So moving on then, I'd now like to introduce um, uh, speakers from Bangladesh and Malawi, and who will be speaking to us about the next three steps along the data value chain, data creation and collection, data curation, and data analysis. So we'll be hearing two different perspectives on a similar initiative that was undertaken both in Bangladesh and in Malawi. So I'll, um, I think our colleague from Malawi is going to speak first. So I'll introduce um, Mr. Isaac Dambula first. He's Deputy Director of Planning with the Ministry of Health. He's worked extensively in the field of population development and health management. Currently, he's the head of the Monitoring and Evaluation Division of the Ministry of Health with the Department of Policy Planning and Policy Development. And that's a role that encompasses a lot of data management for health service delivery. Our second speaker from Bangladesh will be Dr. Mustafis. Dr. Mustafis is director of the National Nutrition Service with the Institute of Public Health and Nutrition 
the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So Dr. Mustafis has over 25 years of experience in the field of nutrition planning, implementation, advocacy and social mobilization, management, training, monitoring and evaluation at national and international levels. He obtained his MBBS degree from uh, Maiman Singh Medical College in Bangladesh and a master's in public health from Atish Dipankar University of Science and Technology. So thank you both for talking about these steps in the data value chain. I think first we're gonna hear from Mr. Isaac Dambula. So over to you, Mr. Dambula. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Good afternoon. I will talk about introducing and integrating nutrition data in the DHIS2. That's the main data platform for Malawi. And this is for the purpose of development and the emergency context. Next. Thank you. Just as a brief background, we have made a lot of progress on the issues of nutrition in Malawi. For example, vitamin A deficiency has been reduced among 59 months and the less stunting has been reduced for uh, primary school going children and also uh, wasting has been reduced. But on the other side, we haven't managed to uh, reduce overweight that has increased. And in the, currently, we have also managed to uh, include the nutrition programs on the this DHIS2 platform. That's the main data collection and management system. We are able to co collect nutrition data and uh, upload it on that platform. Next. Thank you. And uh, as I said, we have a, a list on my uh, on the left hand side of the slide. You will see a list of programs that are now uh, uh, reporting to the uh, data platform uh, programs of, uh, related to nutrition that are now reporting. And also below that, you see a list of uh, policies that we have that are guiding us uh, in the management of nutrition data. And this is done at all levels. We have at facility level where programs are reporting at facility level and also at the district level, which is a, an aggregation of facilities within a catchment area. And also at national level where we have all the programs related to nutrition data are reporting in the national data platform. Next. Thank you. Let me also mention about the lessons that we have learned. We have observed that clarity of roles on who is to report, who is to collect data, that is very important. It has added value to our efforts and also integrating various uh, programs, reporting, collaborating and, re and reporting on the major main platform that has helped us and also uh, creating demand for data. That is also a good practice that we, are, we have observed. And also we need robust uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, nutrition data management. And on data use, we have managed to produce annual bulletins, quarterly bulletins that are being used by, by various programs and the partners and also dashboards that one can use to, to guide in their program planning and implementation. Next. Actually, that was my last slide. slide. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Tambula. If I can hand over to um, Dr. Mustafis. Yes, please. Oh, so next slide, please. Uh, so 
good morning or afternoon or evening to listener i don't know who is who's part of the world so basically i want to say you okay it is my great pleasure and pride to present my streaming of the nutrition in bangladesh and use of the district health information system as part of the integrated nutrition system to increase the coverage of the nutrition services prior 2011 nutrition service in bangladesh was just like ad hoc basis fragmented vertical the government launched a minimum package of the nutrition in the name of the national nutrition services to be delivered throughout the government facilities under ministry of the health and family welfare in all the districts all the hospitals all the root level service uh, center of the government the initial implementation identified to bottleneck poor planning and management in the sub district and sub district level inadequate skill manpower next slide please to uh, to have whole sets of the core indication which did not exist before and we have now all the indicators uh, in our hand to achieve impact and outcome of outcome result relevant priorities output indicators were selected with the a focus on tracking service delivery as you can see in the, you can see the output output level the orange row or orange row we have three indicators from maternal nutrition counseling iron folic acid distribution and the pregnant women weight monitoring and fourth one is related to the child health and child nutrition that is child weight monitoring and infant and young child counseling severe acute malnutrition and vitamin a next slide please okay once the indicators were agreed on the paper based register and the dhs2 system were updated and ruled out at present nutrition service data are report, reported online monthly through district health information system from 13500 community clinic the lowest level health facilities and the 480 sub district hospital this is operational in all 64 districts next like this okay now i would like to share four notion that is related to the use of the data for decision making innovation one we have designed a multi functional nutrition information visualized platform to facilitate timely and effective use of the data in an easy manner this multi level dashboard provides complete pictures from the national level district level sub district level states on input output impact indicators the main focus is output level indicator which is updated every month in now with the support from the world bank half a million, half a billion dollar paper performance financing for resulting initiative is is being implemented in 15 district in two high burden uh, uh, divisions we, we have eight division in the country indicator disbursement link uh, disbursement link with the services so out of 16 nutrition got two so this is really working good because all the service are by all the services there and the indicators are uploaded through the electronic system digital system innovation three apart from that the individual tracker and the dashboard has also been linked with the rapid pro a sms gateway sms is sent to offer 3000 health workers of community clinic that the lowest service provider with their score on a monthly basis innovation for recognition recognizing data with the dss2 in internal also interpret external real time monitoring and reporting of nutrition services using smartphone during the visit it is low performing districts the facilities based on the dhs2 data are also targeted for mentoring the data collected is automatically uploaded 
things are reported on real time with real time dashboard the trigger reaction and uh, action to address identified problem and bottleneck next slide please with with all this effort and the innovation this nutrition data transport also need to be realistic about the work it takes to get the this level we have started using data and see service like independent young self feeding counseling increased from 20% facilities to over 90% facilities we are also identifying areas of falling behind the using of the priority nutrition reporting indicator data pnri and support them finally these efforts are applied in emergency as well as the humanitarian uh, setting too all of this prove that data system can be massively improved when there is a commitment and resource next slide please so these are some links you can you can visit this link which can help you to uh, you know more details about our work thank you everybody this is short presentation from bangladesh over thank you so much uh, to both of you dr mustafis um thank you so much um, mr dambula for for sharing with us kind of the some of the different uh, learnings some of the differences some of the similarities in how both countries uh, have integrated uh, nutrition uh, data into district health information systems and and i think it's amazing and so powerful to see those visualizations of data um and how the way that it helps you know a meeting take place the way that it helps decisions to be made uh yeah, fantastic so as we did before uh, before i move to the final set of presentations we have a little bit more information to share with you um so if you just take a minute to uh, to look at the slide this time it's about a commitment and it's a commitment to innovation in data collection uh, from peru And next slide. And a second commitment, this time to integrating nutrition into district health information systems uh, by UNICEF and partners. Uh, I'll let you read that for a second. Great. So let's move to our third and final uh, set of present country presentations. Uh, so in this case, uh, now we're going to hear a little bit about uh, from uh, Niger um, around the final two steps of the data value chain. So specifically, data translation and dissemination for use in decision making. And we'll hear from two speakers on Niger's experience with NIPIN, French La Plateforme Nationale d'Information sur la Nutrition. Donc c'est mon plaisir de introduire les deux uh, présentateurs. So it's a quiet pleasure for me to introduce. Uh, both speakers who are talking about Niger. First of all, I would like to introduce Dr. Denisa Ellen Onat, the ambassador of the European Union in Niger, of the European Union. Yes, the gentleman did say France, but I read the European Union, not France. Yes. So, Dr. Onat had studied medicine and specialized on gynecology in Romania, where she had worked as a doctor as a medicine in Bucharest from 2006 up to 2011. She had also worked on the international organization of the different also uh, the treaty in Brussels and therefore dealing for the coordinations of capacity buildings and uh, as well as the medical issues operation in 2011 appointed in charge of the fragility and emergency at the for the development of the European Commission and since 2015, Ambassador of the European Union. It is currently doing this at the level of Nigeria. Second one, I would like to introduce to you. Secondly, I would like to present Mr. Sadu Bakoye, who is currently holds the he is the uh, Secretary General of uh, the Minister of Plan Minister in Niger. He's also the president of the NIPIN platform, which is the national platform for nutrition in 
en Niger. Monsieur Boké has more than 30 years of career in the Nigerian administration. He was held and continues to hold high positions. He's currently uh, Secretary General of Minister of Planning of Niger, and he's he's been uh, he's a member of the Board of Directors of National Institute of Statistics of Niger and President of the National Steering Committee of the National Information Platform for Nutrition. And he holds a degree from the University of Antwerp in Belgium, and uh, he's called a Master Degree in Project Management and Evaluation from the Institute of Development policy of management of the University of Antwerp. Thank you very much. And I'll start with uh, the, the ambassador. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, inviting me as a donor um, to deliver, uh, as a donor conveyor, to give a small introduction before Mr. Sec uh, General Secretary give you the core of the presentation. Why is the EU uh, vividly implied in that project? Um, because we are committed to four to six percent of the of the of the investments that are in that project and all the uh, collective data and, and, and information and linked to nutrition. And we are now working on all the different donors and looking closely at that. Secondly, uh, for 15 years, we are a partner of the Nigerian government in the area of nutrition on the structural issues like uh, finding solution in the long term, but also for uh, dealing with current immediate crisis. So we work at all levels and we help with a national, um, you know, government or NGOs or civil society um, go through all kind of spectrum and, and, and structures, but we help them all throughout. There are different uh, comparative um, positive aspects of that uh, platform is that first it allowed to have a multi-sectorial approach to nutrition because it uh, ensure that um, there is a multi-sectoral vision of the analysis on top of that it helps uh, to build capacity for the actors of the nutrition sector and then thirdly uh, it embeds in this approach, uh, the question of uh, uh, making this decision making and lobbying uh, for the increasing the nutritional situation. To achieve that, our national partners, and they will mention that, have put uh, a specific framework and to be able to do that, you need good uh, strategic leadership. You also need to have an excellent execution at high level, and that is done thanks to that Statistic National Institute. You will learn a lot more, but I would like to add two elements for us. As donor, um, this is also a a uh, part of a more wide um, support to the use of this of statistics as a tool uh, for lobbying for education and helping overall the the working environment of government and raising awareness of population we also are part of an approach where we uh, support this statistic uh, national uh, operation system we also work on education and nutrition we believe they are critical for the development of the ch the, the children so it's part of the early child approach uh, we want to have um, an approach that is as wide as possible and not just focus on nutrition but part of an integrated development of the child as a donor i would like also to add that we, as the EU, have supported this approach with all the modality of help that we have and it is as close as possible to the needs of our partners. It's the financing support. We also help them to put plans in place and put in place uh, reforms. We help them with the financing, but also with other 
kind of supports. So with this approach, we put in place a system that is as advanced as possible to really uh, help the, the partners with their objectives. And to do that, we also use very flexible tools, for instance, subventions and also a service contract, which uh, allow to adapt to the needs as we go. And last and final thing that I think is maybe the most important from those in experiences and also seeing how pertinent, how important this initiative is, as the Niger partner will mention, we we say that we will continue with that support from 2020 to 2024, 2022 to 2024 for this process to carry on and become uh, a long-term approach. And this will be part uh, of new investments and we new donation that will be made in the next run of 2020 to 2024. So thanks to that, we will be able to help even more the different development programs that will be put in place. Uh, not only Niger is helps, but also nine other countries um, are, get our support to help them the implementation of that uh, uh, national policy of uh, nutrition safety. And uh, we, we are certain that along with our partners, those financing will really make a difference for the life and the health and the well-being of the children and the populations of our partners. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Mr. Moderator, ladies and gentlemen, um, Mr. Panel panelist, it's with great pleasure that I will uh, talk today on our national uh, platform. Next. It is important to note the big um, volunteer uh, of the national government and Niger government to uh, fight against malnutrition. Um, so we recognize the importance uh, that during since 2011-2012, Niger uh, committed at na international level to work on nutrition. And in 2017, they uh, put in place a national policy for nutrition and security and an action plan. But there's not enough information in most sectors that are contributing to um, the nutritional health uh, in the country. This is why the country, along with its partners, is collecting data regularly to try and get as much information as possible to help orientate uh, the policies and prioritize the different actions and decisions that are going made. Uh, and this is helping to understand the impact of the policies that are made in place. This platform, National for Information of Nutrition, PNIM, is a system um, that allows this information to be uh, shared. Uh, we can analyze data, thanks to that, and reinforce the national capacities on the organizational level. And we can. Sh this is what we're sharing with you today. It works um, with other kind of tools. The first uh, element is that it is important to put in place a central uh, system with a portal with different tools to um, be able to, to stock data and also disseminate it. We need to have a tool to um, have all this data 
and uh, be able to follow all the different indicators on different sectors. And we have 340 different indicators coming from different ministries that are contributing to that platform. We are developing different adapt methodology that are um, linked to the national context. And we also put in place a centralized system that is linked to that uh, multi-sectorial action plan. And um, obviously the center of that is nutrition. The objective is to have as much information as possible that is uh, free and accessible for everybody. Next. For, for this data to be useful, it needs to meet the needs and uh, the, of the, the users. So we studied that in Niger and uh, we created a framework plan with biannual analysis that is being decided with the different leaders. We included the users and the leaders. This way, we could develop the capacities of the different users. And we worked alongside the, the people that were putting in place the different the policy and all the different bodies that uh, were working along uh, with our partners on nutrition. This has been validated by the technical committee in charge of the action plan and different uh, interpretation workshop has been cre have been created. The, the analysis have been uh, used to help the people making decision and influence them to tell them what necessity they need to um, in terms of allocating resources the production of analysis of uh, results has allowed us to uh, work in favor of the nutrition in niger that allow us to work on the right of uh, of nutrition in Niger and uh, um, raise awareness of uh, the people making decision regarding uh, what they need to do to implement uh, uh, good nutrition in the country. That allowed the, the state to put in place a, a good strategy to meet the needs of the people in terms of nutrition and uh, meet the need of the policy in terms of uh, uh, health and nutritional security. We want to raise awareness of also of the leaders of balancing the, the different initiative to prevent um, bad nutrition and having a multi-sectorial approach regarding this. It also allowed to define seven priorities that were important to and allow them to prepare a summary to develop different arguments regarding that. The platform showed results and showed uh, all the positive outcomes that it could bring with data based on a real um, decision based on real data. It allowed to carry on the efforts and uh, reinforce the capacity of the long value chain of data. Actions have already been put in place and have been um, 
helped and uh, supported by the different partners. Niger, Niger has a vol wants to um, disseminate that and uh, reinforce this capacity to raise uh, awareness and to collect data. Niger also hope to be able to use that experience to raise awareness globally and show how that platform can work. Here, Mr. Moderator, is the experience from Niger that we wanted to share with you. I thank you, Mr. Bakoy, and also Dr. Yohannet. Uh, for the PNPN in Niger. We have one final piece of information to share with you. Uh, uh, I believe not an actual commitment, but a potential commitment um, uh, that can inspire you to think of the kind of commitment uh, that can be formulated around data. Great. So uh, if we can move on now, uh, we'll have uh, we have a few minutes um, to pose a few of your questions to our speakers. Um, I'll, we've kind of done a bit of a prioritization of some of your questions uh, based on uh, how much time we have, but also, you know, the questions uh, that are harder to, that, that seem more specific to today's topic around data. So we've ch chosen two or three questions, but thank you, everybody, uh, for the questions that you've posted um, and where possible if they're very specific questions but not specific to today's topic we can also try and answer them directly in the q a window so the first question is to either punima or, or divya up to you uh, who answers the question but some people are asking so did your service provide information about who the users of nutrition data are and how they were using that data if they did what did you learn about those data users Oh, we did try to answer that in, in the chat. So we haven't done surveys of data users uh, as explicitly, but our experience tells us that officials through the system uh, and not just officials, development partners and others really do value data uh, from different sources. I, I think the challenges are often that they're not, um, uh, you know, that the process of data use isn't necessarily as um, streamlined and uniform in the range of different review meetings that happen across the nutrition system. So for example, there are monthly review meetings uh, within some, you know, at, at a certain level, there are quarterly review meetings at, at other levels. And what we want, uh, ideally, what one would want to see is, is fairly yeah. uniform data use guidelines across all of those, and then be able to track that. Um, so that's all I have to say uh, on that. Uh, Debbie, I don't know if you'd like to add anything. No, nothing further. I just wanted to just add that, um, you know, the challenge is very much the format in which uh, the data is presented and, you know, discussed. And so really simplifying and choosing a few priority indicators and then having, um, you know, a sense of what the actions are to be taken post the meeting based on the data. I think, you know, really going into the nitty gritty of all of this helps a lot to really get from data to decisions and actions. And, uh, okay. you know, working on that is useful. Thanks for that. And I think that ties to another comment that we saw in the chat box saying that, um, and, and I guess a follow up question, you know, different ways of trying to increase the number of data users um, and what you've tried. You know, what have you tried to do to get more people to, to use the data? And the suggestion here is, of course, is that the more the data is socialized, so the more it's shared, um, the more users you'll have, but also agreeing with those users ahead of time on which key indicators uh, would be reviewed. Uh, and then, of, of course, you know, they would find those indicators and the data more useful. So I was wondering how much you've worked with users to actually shape what data they end up getting and how it's presented and if that's helped. Yeah, um, I think really, you know, the ownership piece is very important in terms of making sure that uh, the people who are using it get, have a sense that, uh, you know, they have complete, uh, you know, they have a lot of control in terms of choosing the indicators um, and 
also in terms of you know how regular it is where where's the evidence coming from and also eventually you know working with government there is the sense that they are able to choose what's going public because that is uh, uh, that is also part of the you know um, decision making framework that they use is very often they want the data first to to socialize it within the uh, within their ecosystem Right. So there are sensitivities to manage as well, of course. Okay. Yes. Uh, thanks, both of you. Um, now I'd like to send a question over to Mr. Dambula. Je voudrais donc envoyer une question à M. Dambula. La question ici même est de dire comment est-ce que le Malawi et oh, les données de Malawi, aussi bien que les données qui sont analysées avec des recommandations, comment est-ce que tout ceci est alimenté vers les différentes donc, entités? Est-ce que c'est fait, par exemple, de manière mensuelle? Comment tout ceci est alimenté? Merci. Sorry, I didn't get the English. Bon, je n'ai pas, pas eu la... Je vais encore une fois... Pour... Can tell us a little bit about the process by which uh, data and I guess analysis and feedback is given back to districts and, and the regularity with which that's done. So how is the data and the analysis discussed with the districts um, and, and with what regularity is that done? Thank you so much. At the lowest level, the facilitators get feedback from the district uh, because they the facilities are collect, have a collection of a form a collection of a district. So the facilities get feedback from the district. And the district also is uh, comprised into a zone. A number of districts form a zone. So the districts amongst themselves, they also provide feedback and reviews to each, to each other and to the facilities. And we also have finally a national level review where all the districts get feedback from the each, each other and from the national level and the 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 facilities get feedback at on monthly basis and the zones get feedback on a quarterly basis and the, the national level feedback is once a year thank you great thanks so much mr dambula very uh, uh clear and uh, concrete answer thanks so much i think we've got time for a third uh, question before we head on to our panel discussion. Uh, this is a question for Dr. Mustafis. Uh, Dr. Mustafis, a very uh, practical question here coming from someone about uh, integrating nutrition data into DA at the district level. Um, and somebody was first of all wanted to give you a compliment on that effort and that work, but asking a very practical question. How do you deal with poor network and I guess telephone and internet coverage in more remote areas. How have you dealt with that? Have you come up with alternative ways of working? Over to you, Ms. Dr. Mustafis. Okay. Initially, it was really poor. Now the electricity supply is in whole country. And I do agree with you, some hard to reach area are in Bangladesh. So in that case, they, they can upload the data online and offline. So they can manage this one. So they can upload and they can get, yeah, it will be automatically uploaded when they are in, online. So this is not a big, big factor nowadays. It was a factor, big factor, even one year back, two years back. So now it is okay in electricity as well as the net connection is far, far better now. Sorry, I cannot listen. Yes, thank you for that. So what I was saying was, so that means that a year or two ago, when internet coverage was still a problem, the solution was that the system could work um, offline and then it yeah. would upload whenever they had internet available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was the practice. Now it is far, far better. Great. Okay, oh. thank you so much for that uh, clarification, for that, uh, for that detailed mm -hmm. answer. Okay, so I'd like to say thank you to all of our presenters uh, today from all our different countries and from the European Union. Um, thank you so much for your presentations and for kind of walking us through the different steps of the Tata uh, value chain. So uh, we'll now uh, move on to our panel um, presentation.
Uh, next slide, please, for our panel uh, uh, discussion. Great. So um, for our panel, um, this is a panel where, you know, uh, we will be posing the panelists certain questions. I'm afraid we don't have, uh, you know, a time probably to open up for lots of questions from, from the audience, uh, but we will be posing our um, panelists uh, a series of questions. Um, and I'm excited to say that a lot of those questions are around commitments that those panelists are announcing or making. Uh, so that's um, great news. So um, first of all, let me introduce um, our speakers. So we'll be having a panelist today from the Republic of Uganda, the Republic of Yemen, and the United States. From the Republic of uh, Uganda, and I'll, um, I'll introduce everyone first, and then we, all, we know who everyone is on the panel, and then we can go into the panel discussion. So we're joined by two panelists from the Public of, uh, Republic of Uganda. First, Ms. Samali Namukoso. She's Assistant Commissioner and Head of the Nutrition Division with the Ministry of Health of Uganda. Ms. Namukoso has over 15 years of experience working at Uganda's Ministry of Health. She provides coordination and leadership for health sector nutrition interventions, and that includes policy formulation, planning, implementation, capacity building, resource mobilization, advocacy, m and &E, and research. Um, lots of different facets of nutrition and planning and implementation. So uh, Ms. Namukoso holds a, a BSc and an MSc in agriculture, a PGD in food and nutrition security, an advanced degree in business administration, and is currently working uh, to complete her PhD in public health nutrition. So good luck with that, um, Ms. Namukoso. Secondly, from Uganda, I'd like to introduce Mr. Paul Mbaka. He's also an assistant commissioner with the Ministry of Health of Uganda, but as head of health information. So Mr. Mbaka leads multiple initiatives in health information, digital health, knowledge management for the health sector, ensuring health information is used in decision-making and policy formulation. It seems so um, um, appropriate for today's topic. He's a statistician and a software developer with over 15 years experience in ME systems, in research and data systems. He's previously worked with the Ugandan Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development, WHO and the World Food Programme. Welcome to both of you. From the Republic of Yemen, I'd like to welcome Ms. Karima Ahmed al Hada. So Ms. Karima is with the Ministry of Planning and International Cooperation and a Planning and Liaison Specialist with the Sun Secretariat in Yemen. And Ms. al Hada led the development process of Yemen's multi-sectoral nutrition action plan and nutrition strategy. And she led the development of Yemen's Sun Business Network. She's improving the multi-sectoral nutrition information system in Yemen and also working on strengthening national platforms by bringing as many diverse stakeholders together as possible. And recently, she was nominated as a member of SUN's executive committee. Welcome to Ms. Hada. And finally, from the United States of America, I'd like to welcome Dr. Erin Milner. Dr. Milner is a senior nutrition monitoring, evaluation and learning advisor with USAID in Washington, DC. At USA, Dr. Milner leads monitoring, evaluation, and learning efforts, and she manages multi-sectoral nutrition programs. She has 14 years of experience designing and implementing nutrition and health projects throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. Previously, she directed several environmental health M&E programs and created resources for nutrition-sensitive agriculture programming. She led research in Kenya on nutrition linkages with ecosystems, food security, WASH, and early childhood development. Erin started out as a Peace Corps volunteer in Ghana. She holds a PhD in environmental health sciences with a focus on public health nutrition from my alma mater as well, the University of California, Berkeley. So I'd like to welcome um, all four of you to today's panel and say hello to everybody. And can we see everybody? Great. So thank you all for joining today's panel. And so um, I'll be uh, first asking uh, the delegation from Yemen uh, for a few words, and then the USA, and then Uganda, just to let you know how, how, how we'll work this out. And I know that uh, Ms. Halada is, having, uh, is not going to turn on her camera today, but I know she's with us and she's listening. So that's great. So I think I'll pose uh, the first question. And the first question is the same question we're going to ask everybody. Um, but um, so to Ms. Uh, Karim al Halda. Um, in, in a few minutes, could you please share with us the 2021 N4G data commitment that Yemen has made to work on over the next four years, which means it has to be achieved by 2025. Um, and also, could you tell us 
why did Yemen choose this particular commitment? So over to you, uh, Ms. Alhada. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me uh, for today. Actually, uh, we recognize the importance of timely and quality data with adequate uh, level of um, disaggregation to guide the country decision making and allocation of resources for nutrition. And hence, we appreciate the need to strengthen the nutrition information system um, to enhance quality utilization of nutrition data for policy development, program design, and monitoring. Thus, our uh, G commitment is um, that the government of Yemen commits to strengthen the national nutrition information system. This includes surveys, routine monitoring and surveillance, exploring opportunities for enhanced digitalization of data evaluations and strengthening human resources capacity. Uh, of Yemen also commits to harmonize nutrition data and information system across sectors to reflect the standards and core indicators that, that are, are aligned with the national strategy and to develop a national nutrition monitoring evaluation and accountability framework. So this is the, the commitment and it was chosen um, actually to our accumulate, accumulate uh, effort in the country um, as Yemen undertook uh, a nutrition information system review last year. Um, this process was very consultative in country uh, involving the Ministry of Health, UN agencies, NGOs, partners, and other uh, donor communities. It was a successful experience considering the political divide in the country. This success proved the essentiality of supporting the systems and national and local technical initiatives in conflict affected fragile uh, context. Um, so um, it is a prerequisite for transition from humanitarian and short term interventions to the development. Um, so the review has resulted in a three-year work plan that provides the roadmap for strengthening the NIS. Um, the gap to be addressed in this work plan include uh, development of a national nutrition monitoring and evaluation accountability framework, uh, standardization of nutrition indicators, aligning nutrition indicators across other critical sectors, and str streamlining of data collection mechanisms for program reporting and nutrition surveillance at community and health faci uh, level, facility level. Also to uh, rule out of district health information system two, nutrition module, uh, uh, dissemination of nutrition information, and finally strengthening human resources capacity to support the NIS in Yemen. So um, Yemen is um, among the front runner country for global action plan on child wasting. Uh, as such, the country with support from the UN agencies, uh, UNICEF, WHO, FAO, WFP, and UNCHR has published a multi-sectorial plan geared at consolidating strategic actions to address child wasting in Yemen. Uh, in the coming months, Yemen will be finalizing the National Nutrition Strategy, the Nutrition Monitoring Evaluation Accountability Framework will be linked to this nutrition. Um, both these initiatives in key steps towards realization of this NIS commitment. Therefore, the N4G NIS commitment is built upon a thorough nutrition information system review and anchored on a three-year NIS work plan, uh, fully supported by the government and its stakeholders. On the other hand, actually, uh, on the multi-sectorial information system, um, Yemen has been working on MAP Yemen website 
to enhance the accessibility of it, uh, and availability of use of food and nutrition multi-sectorial data. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Ms. al Hadar, and congratulations to the Republic of Yemen for, for making this commitment and for it being such a well thought out commitment. Sounds like it's been two years or more in the making. Uh, so um, congratulations to you and thank you for announcing that commitment today. I'll go straight to um, our colleague from, um, from the United States. Uh, so Ms. Erin uh, Milner, uh, over to you, Miller, uh, uh, Ms. Milner. So uh, probably a very similar question to you, really. Um, could you also please share with us the 2021 N4G commitment that you've, uh, that you've made? And can you also tell us briefly why you chose uh, this commitment and uh, what kind of things you're putting in place to try and make sure that it happens? If you can do that in three to four minutes, three, three minutes max, please. Thank you. Sure, thank you. So our 2021 commitment actually expands upon our 2017 data commitment from the last Nutrition for Growth Summit that we made with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We continue to partner with the Gates Foundation as another major donor prioritizing nutrition data. And this, the 2017 commitment was to engage in a partnership with the foundation to strengthen nutrition metrics that empower donors and practitioners to better track and evaluate our nutrition investments. This new 2021 commitment builds upon this and brings in new partners, specifically UNICEF and WHO, who as we all know, provide global guidance and evidence on what data to collect and how to use it. And this new commitment and partnership aims to strategically enhance the quantity and quality of nutrition data. So we at USAID actually look forward to formally announcing the details of our data commitment at the upcoming Nutrition for Growth Summit. In terms of why we chose this commitment, we chose it because as a donor, we recognize the need to strengthen nutrition data, particularly in terms of availability and use to ensure policies and programs are robust and designed and implemented to improve nutrition outcomes that are context specific. Therefore, as I mentioned, we are partnering with the Gates Foundation, UNICEF and WHOs to strategically increase the quantity and quality of nutrition data. Data are also important across all sectors, including health, food, and resilience. And therefore, we wanted to ensure that our global data efforts can inform our country partnerships and continue to address the complex multi-sectoral nature of nutrition. This also aligns with our USAID multi-sectoral nutrition strategy, which highlights USAID's commitment to data-driven nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive programming. And then in terms of, of how we will make sure these commitments happen, USAID will ensure that these commitments happen by strategically continuing to work with our country counterparts to apply global evidence and metrics advancements. We also aim to expand work on nutrition data within health information systems and population-based surveys. And then finally, we are motivated to build capacity for increasing the quality and quantity of nutrition data collected and used in countries to develop policies and implement, monitor, and evaluate evidence-based nutrition programs. Thank you. Thanks so much, Erin, for, for, for making the commitment and for announcing the commitment today. Uh, great to hear. Uh, and I'm sure we'll hear more about it uh, uh, throughout uh, N4G. So uh, for our last uh, presentation of a commitment today, I'd like to hand over to the team uh, from Uganda. I do have to ask you to speak for one to two minutes each uh, maximum. So I have to ask you to be uh, very brief, please. So I'm not sure if I, do I go first to uh, Miss uh, Samali and then Mr. Mbaka or the other way? Sorry, I can't hear you. Ladies first. Yeah, okay. ladies ahead, first. Please. So Thank I'll go first. Thank um, you. Uh, we are still living in the era of COVID, so you'll bear with us. We are two on the same table, so we, I have to leave my mask on. 
So uh, we extend our appreciation to the organizers for this uh, important uh, webinar about the subject matter um, in terms of how we have invested in human resource capacity for nutrition programming and nutrition data reporting and why it is important. I want to say that uh, all our data in Uganda, uh, especially in the health sector is integrated. And I want to mention that uh, we have about 28 nutrition indicators that have been integrated in the uh, health, uh, health management information system and the district health information uh, system. And uh, in terms of human resources, I want to say that uh, our health system is organized in such a way that we have the Ministry of Health at the central level. Then under it, we have the national referral hospitals, regional referral hospitals. We have uh, general hospitals. We have health center fours, threes, twos, and then the community. And then uh, from general hospitals and above, we have biostaticians and uh, nutritionists. Uh, nutritionists are primarily responsible for nutrition service delivery, while uh, the biostaticians are responsible for data management. So we work hand in hand in terms of uh, data management. And specifically for nutritionists, they are really very, very instrumental when it comes to designing the data collection tools, interpret interpretation of data elements, indicators, and knowledge translation. And I want to inform the meeting that currently we are going through HMIS review, and the, the team is actually looking at what data indicators are a priority, which ones are redundant, and uh, this is uh, the role of uh, nutritionists. In uh, terms of uh, investing- uh, in Sorry, I, I don't mean to, to interrupt you, uh, Ms. Samali, but because of time, would it be possible for us to hear from uh, um, uh, Uganda's commitment on N4G as well? I know that you wanted to present a bit of what's being done already, and also then present the commitment to N4G. Would it be possible for us to hear now uh, the commitment regarding data, please? Okay, thank you very you much. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just to give you a, a quick background, the, the, the data systems in Uganda are a bit of a hybrid, uh, partly paper-based, uh, and for the aggregate data, it is digitized. Uh, our commitments uh, will really focus on uh, improving uh, data use by improving its access. We are setting, we, we plan to set up uh, uh, a, a, health, a national health observatory uh, that of course will have a nutrition component, uh, merging data uh, from, from uh, the service data from, from, from our districts, uh, but also incorporating data on inputs into the health sector, like financing, HR and others, also including data from the research, uh, like uh, uh, operational research and other academia to really present uh, a single analytical uh, framework uh, for decision makers. We are also trying to, we're also looking at digitizing uh, at the patient level because that is still paper-based. So really these are the two main focus areas for us uh, to, to really digitize uh, capture at the point of care, uh, as well as uh, improve on, on that process of really putting the data from all these multiple sources into a single analytical framework uh, to really ease uh, that use by decision makers. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and also to you again, thank you for making that commitment and for announcing it uh, today. Uh, it's very exciting to hear. Thank you so much, both of you, uh, uh, Ms. Namukose, uh, Mr. Um, Mbaka. So thank you uh, to all our panelists for, for announcing their commitments today. Um, apologies that it was a bit uh, uh, under pressure of time, uh, but we know how much work has gone into formulating your commitment and we were all very excited to hear them today. Uh, so we're going to close uh, today's event. I think while I'm introducing um, speakers, if we could just see, uh, yeah, so just one final announcement here, a, a small, uh, another example, uh, this time from uh, Nigeria, which might inspire also a, a commitment on data that you could make. So I'd like to introduce uh, our two speakers that will close today uh, our event. Uh, so first of all, um, let me introduce Patricia 
Ngoran uh, Tekli, who, as I said, I've known for quite a while. Uh, so um, Patricia is advisor to the president's office in Ivory Coast. She's the Sun Focal Point, and also she's the coordinator of multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder platforms within the National Council for Nutrition, Food, and Early Childhood Development. She's a government advisor for the Regional Excellency Center Against Hunger and Malnutrition. She's a physician. She specializes in nutrition policies, and she has 25 years experience in the field of health, of which 14 are in nutrition. Um, she's also um, a member of the Sun Executive Committee for Francophone countries. Um, for, she has been for the last month and a half. So over to you, Patricia. And um, I'm afraid I have to let you know that we have about Merci. two minutes. Merci, for your sir, for you. cette modération. Je suis ravi de pouvoir faire la synthèse de ces importants échanges. Thank you. I'm very happy to be with you. We would like to greet this opportunity related to this different engagement related to the nutrition through the accountability and the system. I would like to address our warmest thanks to the Japanese government as well as the organizers. UNICEF is an issue, data thanks, as well as ANIP. All our gratefulness is also oriented to the different uh, uh, donators, uh, European Commission, as well as our different representative of the different country, different countries who have taken part, uh, India, Bangladesh, Malawi, Nigeria, Uganda, Yemen. And I do apologize if I have forgotten a few other words. I would like also to greet the expertise that was also, we would like to thank them for the clarity of their presentation, the quality of these exchanges, the share of the experiences, good practices in the field of data management, Excel that deserve to be disseminated. All these engaged, all involved for the enhancement of the nutrition within a multi-sectorial approach in order to eliminate malnutrition with different action plans, multi-sectorial, the three budgetized indicators that will, will be defined, implemented by certain countries. We are fully convinced that without follow-up of these indicators, we, without data of quality, we would not take any type of decision, neither any type of accountability, accountability, which is a quite a problem for the type of target that we have set up for the whole summit for the horizon of 2026, as well as the SDG for the horizon of 2030. So this is very vulnerable when we need to do a comparative follow-up at the regional level, as well as on the country level and worldwide with data that are located on a different level that do not reflect the reality. And I think that we had benefit from this very first presentation of all this. We noticed that there are certain efforts in the sector of the health through the DHA in order to enhance the capacity all the way during the chain values and the requirements to enhance this chain in the other type of sectors means that which are involved in the nutrition, as well as the decentralizations of dissemination use to starting from basic communities. And here I am thinking about the emergency situations with certain vulnerability, meaning that within the framework of the multi-sectoriality, we are also observing the implementation of the information system, which is centralized, and together, together with Nigeria, nine countries are also benefiting of the support from the European Union. These platforms do contribute to a very good type of, of environment and the decision making. So I would like to greet all these efforts, all these initiatives that do deserve to be promoted in order to scale up and getting inspired and constructing on the multi-sectorial nutrition system on the basis of the sectors that do represent the most advancements of this, as it was the case of the health. I would like to seize this opportunity, if I may. May I ask you to conclude, please? So the engagement that I've taken in TACU needs to be taken. The different countries would need to invest on the nutrition I would like just to give you an example on the importance of the data. It's very much like a hospital. You know, to symbolize this very often, it is when the financings are not well planned how to construct on sustainability. 
and this is needs to be registered in the sustainability of the action. And we would like also to greet all the countries and primarily the stakeholders to make this a priority. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for all the encouragement of the other countries. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia, for all these words. Uh, we have a uh, closing remarks uh, from the closing. Ezo, Director of the Global Health Policy Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan. I do apologize. We're probably going three minutes over our scheduled uh, time. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for your patience. Dr. Ezo has worked in Japan's public health and global health arena for decades. Most recently, he was the counsel of the permanent mission of Japan to United Nations. Um, he was also involved in the WHO emergency reform as the first senior coordinator for global health. And finally, he's a medical doctor with a PhD and he's completed two masters of public health at Harvard University. Dr. Izzo's uh, uh, closing remarks will be in video and after that, we'll be wrapping up the event. Thank you so much. Distinguished colleagues, Ladies and gentlemen, first, I would like to express my gratitude for UNICEF, Sun, Datadent, EU, Gates Foundation, and other members of the Nutrition Data Partners Group, and all of you who have gathered today to discuss on the initiatives to strengthen the monitoring mechanism on nutrition programs across the world. These experiences kindly shared today, especially in India, Bangladesh and Nigel clearly demonstrate that good nutrition data is a fundamental basis in order for us to identify key populations who should be addressed as well as to conduct more efficient nutrition related interventions. We all know what gets measured gets done. With this in mind, I trust that you had valuable reflections and shared best practices on the steps taken to improve nutrition data. As we head towards the upcoming Tokyo Nutrition for Growth Summit 2021, it is critical that we commit to having good quality data to measure our progress in ending all forms of malnutrition. This is particularly important to make universal health coverage meaningful as well as a reality and to build more equitable and sustainable food systems for all. Allow me to give you an example from Japan on the relevance of data in nutrition. Over years, Japan has worked to review how nutrition can be optimized and monitored across its population. The world's first nutrition research institute was established in Japan in 1914 and later became the National Institute of Nutrition. This institute contributed to the analysis of the ingredients of major foods, preparation of data, and establishment of standards of nutrient intake. In addition, through surveys and research by research institutes, Japan has accumulated scientific data that is the basis of nutrition policy and nutrition research for over 100 years. Japan has adopted the PDCA plan, do, check, act cycle in order to promote health and nutrition policies efficiently and effectively in the country. Such experience is one of the reasons why we set data and accountability as a core theme of the Tokyo N4G Summit. Through the Tokyo N4G Summit and other efforts, we need to urge countries and organizations to invest in strengthening nutrition monitoring, which will ultimately impact the nutrition for our populations today and for upcoming generations. I therefore look forward to welcoming you to Tokyo N4G Summit on December 7th and 8th with your ambitious commitments to fight all forms of nutrition by taking advantage of today's rich discussion on data and accountability. I thank you. And thank you so much uh, for those words. And um, just to clarify that uh, Dr. Sotoshi Rose is director of the Global Health Policy Division, the International Cooperation Bureau, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and that that department is overseeing um, the N4G summit and the N4G process uh, that we're all working towards. 
So I just like to say thank you to all our speakers uh, for having uh, participated today. Thank you to all the commitment makers uh, for having uh, thought through those commitments, registered those commitments and having the, announced them today, fantastic. Uh, I'd also like to thank the organizers from the Nutrition Data Partners Group, as well as the Data for the Nutrition Community of Practice for having hosted the event. Um, there were lots of people behind this event uh, organizing it, and um, I want to thank them all personally. I think they made a, a fantastic job of this, so congratulations to them all. Just to let you know, the recording of the webinar is already available um, at the Data for Nutrition YouTube channel, uh, but the copies of uh, translated of translations, I mean, of the presentations and the summary of the Q&A will be shared via that community of practice in the coming weeks. And you can visit the website there for more information. Uh, and for myself, um, I certainly feel <laughs> I learned a lot today. Uh, so it's been a fantastic event for me to moderate. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Thank you so much for everybody's uh, presentations. And I hope everyone has a, a great rest of day or a great evening and, uh, and a great run up to Nutrition for Growth on December 7th and 8th. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks to the translators. Thanks to everybody. And have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.